Hey guys, Dahmer's Cool Stuff here with Pickups Volume 3. It was very quick in between Volume 2 and Volume 3 right now, but in actuality, it's been at least three or four weeks. Volume 2 pickup, I was sick, had to re-record it, kept messing it up, didn't get recorded until well after I wanted to. So, the first purchase, Super Nintendo number 3. Now, I know what you're thinking, why the hell do I need three Super Nintendos? Well, the first one is all yellow, the second one is gray, and now I have another gray one. But this one I'm actually going to modify. I'm going to get the bits, open it up, clean it out. It does need a little bit of it. I'm also going to do a couple modifications to it where I can play the Super Famicom games, and I want to paint it as well. I don't know if I want to paint it super like the Super Nintendo that I have with the uh, red and black, or if I want to do something a little... Um, different, but I know this one I at least want to alter, and I want to mod it to an extent. Now the games that came with it were, it was pretty, pretty cool, it was pretty incredible actually. That was a nice deal, thank you, staff by the way. Got Mortal Kombat. On the Super Nintendo, this is the game that stopped me being a Super Nintendo kid. I remember being a Nintendo guy all the way up until this, this game. Played it at home, it was great. Then I went to a friend's house who had Genesis. And I'm looking at Johnny Cage ripping hearts out. And I'm watching all the blood happen. And I'm watching uh, Sub-Zero ripping, uh, ripping spines out and stuff like that. Game changed me. And sadly it hurt Nintendo for a little bit too. Because not many people got over that little fact. Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo as well. This um, kind of a shooter type of game if I'm not mistaken. I haven't really even popped it in yet. I haven't had enough time, but this kind of long weekend that I'm going to be having, I'm at least going to try to plow through a lot of the games that I've recently got. George Romero, my hero, by the way. Yes, I am working on the article part two of Dawn of the Dead tonight as well, so I hope to get that out of the way. This is the Super Mario All-Stars. This had Mar Super Mario's 1, 2, and 3, and then the Lost Levels. The Lost Levels was actually with Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan was. First time it ever came was on this Super Nintendo card. We got Super Mario Brothers 2 in America, which was really Doki Doki Panic, and it was a nice lead way. This wasn't part of the Super Nintendo set, but I did pick up Super Mario Brothers 2, and this, is, this was called Doki Doki Panic in Japan. Um, it was basically about a, promoting a television company or like some festival. I forgot which one it was. But they created the four mascots, and you played literally Doki Doki Panic when you played this game, except it was Mario, Toad, Luigi, and Princess. The reasoning for it is not too bad. Um, when Nintendo of America got the lost levels, so to speak, in, they deemed it, it was way too hard. At the time, I will admit, yeah, it was. I was a little kid, you know, I was a little kid. I was, like, probably in my teens, like, early, t not even in my teens yet. I was probably, like, 10 or 11, if I'm not mistaken. And that game would have been really hard for me to play, even by Nintendo hard standards. So I can understand why they didn't come out with it. Tiny Toons Adventure, Buster Busts Loose. Um, I will play this at some point. I'm a huge Tiny, Tiny Toons kid. Also, Animaniacs as well. Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally. This one's kind of beat up a little bit, which is okay. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm going to wait for my bits to get in to open up the Nintendo and the games to see if it even works and if I have to change stuff around it. I also got extra copies of Mario World and Star Fox. So... That wasn't too bad, but the Nintendo Madness isn't over yet, folks. I was probably out of frame when I said it the first time, because I'm going crazy here. By the way, rest in peace, Bill Hensman. I picked up a ton of N64 games. I don't own the system yet, but I figured I might as well start buying games. It was a really good deal. Couldn't pass it up once again. The same guy who got me a lot of my other stuff, too, like the Dreamcast and the GameCube. I got Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Episode 1 Racer, and Shadows of the Empire. Three really, actually, not bad Star Wars games on the Nintendo 64. 
I didn't get Goldeneye, but I sure as hell got World Is Not Enough. That's cool, right? Besides, Goldeneye, personal opinion, it's a great game, but the beer goggles of nostalgia kick in really fast. I dare you, unless you're a hardcore Goldeneye player and fan, to pop that game in today and not tell me Odd Job's a fuckhead. And also that the game is very dated. I'm not going to deny it's landmark. I was addicted to that game too. But you play it today, it doesn't hold up well. A game that never held up well at all, Quest 64. I remember playing this at my old uh, bass player's house, my friend Bob. It, it was the most vanilla, straightforward role-playing game that I had played ever until I met that great game called Final Fantasy XIII. But yeah, it's just very straightforward. Crazies, by the way. Underappreciated. Extreme G. This was probably a Wipeout clone. And it also came from Microplay, which was <laughs> crazy because I'm an Axe, Axe of Board fan. And uh, he refers to Microplay. They refer to Microplay in a couple of the stories. Torok and Torok 2. I'm a cerebral bore some shit soon, folks. I'm kind of excited about playing these two games. Um, I know Tor the franchise um, kind of spurted and died because of where it went, but when Turok and Turok 2 came out at the time, it, it was pretty intense. Those were some damn good games for the time. Rainbow Six. If you heard that sound, that's what Rainbow Six was. It, it, it was a fart. It was a giant poop joke. <laughs> and I know there's one version that was actually good. The PC versions at the time when this game came out, excellent. The N64 version could be review material. Blast Corpse, not too familiar. Um, at some point I will get around to playing it. I just need the N64 at first. Hexen, which is a first-person shooter if I'm not... First-person shooter. More of a gothic magic tone to it. And the last N64 game that I bought was Perfect Dark. This game, out, in my opinion, out GoldenEye to GoldenEye. I played this a lot more than GoldenEye. This had bots that you could play with. I mean, yeah, I was living with a couple of guys at the time, and we would play this nonstop. But sometimes I would have a day off, and I wouldn't be able to play with anybody. So I would just pop in eight bots, and boom, hours were killed playing this game. So that was the N64 stuff. My only PlayStation 1 purchase, but it's been a long time since I actually bought a PlayStation 1 game, and I was at Goodwill, and I went and got Gran Turismo. Now, there is one bad part about the Goodwill I went to. It was definitely picked through. Um, there is definitely a reseller in the area, and I know it. I'm right by a flea market, and I know at least two resellers there. So that's okay. Um, it's, it is what it is, but, you know, sometimes they slip. Gran Turismo was there, and it actually had the instruction manual, the reference manual, and the game in excellent condition. It's the only reason why I bought it, too, because of how excellent this was. This is also the game that started my love affair with the Dodge Viper. This game came out in, like, 98, 1998, 1999, around that time. I didn't start... I haven't started driving for at least a couple of years. I didn't... A couple of years ago is actually when I finally got my license. But every Gran Turismo I've played since this one, there is a quest that I do. It's a little mini quest. It's called How Fast Can I Get to the Dodge Viper? Because just me personally, I think it's just the sex... It was the sexiest, fastest machine in this game. And I love it. it you know, I'm like, uh... Nick Cage and, uh... 60, gone in 60 seconds when it comes to the Shelby Cobra. Dodge Viper, that's me. This is a Xbox original game. This was a donation from Danny. He's he's hooking me up. I will say that. Thank you, Danny. It's Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects. Um, the fighting game. I haven't gotten around to cracking it open yet, but as I said, I've got a long weekend ahead of me. 
I've got a lot of time on my hands. So definitely gonna give this game a whirl and see what it was all about. I also got a 360 game, and it's first. Um, it's actually been a while since I bought a new game, like in shrink wrap and all. But I got Dungeon Siege 3. I had downloaded the demo off Xbox Live, and I liked it. It was a very hack and slash Diablo style game. Now, the more we go into this adventure and reality that I live in of Dahmer's cool stuff, you're going to realize something. I'm a sucker for a Diablo style game. I have Diablo 1 and 2 and the expansion for Diablo 2. I have the big pack that you can get. I have, you know, we've saw my collection already over there. Recently, I just got Hellgate London and Mythos 2, which are very Diablo stylish. On my Xbox, if you see the games, the arcade games I have there, I have Torchlight, I have Arcadia Warriors, I also have uh, Castle Crashers. I'm a sucker for these type of games. And so far, I'm about two hours in, and it's, it's got that feel. And I played the demo already, so I kind of blasted through a lot of parts, because literally the demo is the first couple of missions in the game. And it works. It, it definitely works. It's, it's very loot hoary. Um, 20 bucks is a good price for it, too. So now the two games that I, I am kind of sad about that I bought, but I couldn't resist because I'm a sucker for a dollar. We're also getting back into GameStop's buy to get one territory. I don't have the game in there right now. It's actually in my PlayStation 2, but I actually started playing Thrillville again. Thrillville on PlayStation 2 is good game. Um, very park simulator light. It's not like Roller Coaster Tycoon by any stretch of the imagination, but it's an easier version of that game, and it had a personality. Um, a very kooky, quirky personality. And then Stuntman. Hard as shit, <laughs> I might add. But, you know, I couldn't resist for a dollar. And now, we got Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. This was a phenomenal game. It still holds up today. I will still play this today. My only complaint, this is like, and I'm going to get some hate for this, but I'm sorry. I, I've played all the Metal Gears. Metal Gear 4 and I'm not insulting it by saying this, was one of the best movies I've ever played. Metal Gear 4 did a phenomenal job of taking all the storylines in the Metal Gear Solid saga and closing it out. Bravo. That, I didn't think, could ever be done. And it was a great, it's a great game. I didn't think it could be ever be done. And this is where it started going a little screwy. Metal Gear 2. This is where the storyline definitely, definitely got crazy. The Wale Lule Lo, Raiden, the fact that Solid Snake's kind of like a mentor, so to speak, which is good. I love this Pliskin line he does, but it, the, the storyline definitely started jumping a shark for me on this game. Dynasty Warriors 2. Hi, Panda. Dynasty Warriors 2. This was the first time I ever experienced a PlayStation 2 game. A friend of ours came over when I was living in with a bunch of the guys that I played Perfect Dark with. Came over with the PlayStation 2. Jaws dropped because of this. Just because of the, like, the enormity that was going on, on on screen with all the enemies. It, the easiest way I can compare it to is the first time, if you've played it, the first time you played Dead Rising. And you had hundreds of zombies on the screen at once. Very similar. Just, you know, this game came out, and, uh... This was like a PlayStation 2 launch game, so... Devil May Cry. The start of cool, kick-ass, stylish games. Dante is one of the most quotable, brooding, awesome characters in video game history. This was the game that started it. Obviously, it's Devil May Cry 1. I know they're rebooting it. I don't know why. But I can see with the canon of the series being so screwed. Because the order, it's like Devil May Cry 1, then 
three, then four, then two. That, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that is the chronological order of the, the, of the Devil May Cry series. So it definitely got screwy, which is funny because I also got Onimushu. And I've never played Onimushu as well, but Onimushu had a, when, when they were making it, there was a glitch where um, the swordsman, I'm forgetting his name, uh, Sam Suzuki, the, the lead character in Onimushu would do an upward slice and the guy would rise in the air and you would do a combo. Well, the guys that made Devil May Cry were friends with the people who were making Onimushu and Devil May Cry was originally Resident Evil 4, but it was so different that they made it their own game that he, the, the guys who were hanging out with the guys who were making this and he saw that upward thrust combo thing happen. And he's like, and the guys who were making Devil May Cry were like, are you guys keeping that in? The only Mushu team was like, no, we're, you know, aiming for a realistic, non-gravity defying uh, sword play. So the Devil May Cry team asked if they could steal it. You know, if they could use that for their game. And two great franchises were born because of that one decision. And it's still weird to know that this was originally Resident Evil 4. But there's only me issue. I, I'm rambling, but I am just a torrent of hopefully correct information. If I'm not, oops, the internet generation. The second game in the Onimushu series that I got as well. I also got this one at Goodwill. Um, you know, the disc was fine. And the instructions were cool. It's in a blockbuster case, but you can't win them all now, can you? And then the final two games I bought was Hot Shots Golf 3 and Hot Shots Golf 4 for the PlayStation 2. Three-click golf, tons of unlockables, tons of course, not tons of courses, but tons of unlockables, tons of things to do in the game. And I do mean a ton of things to do. You're constantly getting points to buy things in both of these games. So I bought it as some time killer type of stuff. That is it for now on my collection, all my pickups. I'm gonna drop a secret a little bit. The next pickup collection is probably going to be the hugest collection, the hugest thing. I've bought in my retro gaming career. It's going to be epic. I'm very excited for it. I'm getting a massive hookup. I'd just like to thank my cousin. He's going to be named when I have that video. I'm very excited about it. I'm also very excited about finally finishing, or at least restarting, the second part of the dawn of, of the George Romero zombie film. That's what I'm working on right now. That's why the special features were plugged in. And a stupid plug, I know, but when I say I was a fan, when I wrote down that I was a fan of Romero, I wasn't lying. I got the four disc. And I have the zombie walk signed by George Romero. Because I didn't want him... I didn't want this beautiful four-disc set being ruined. I know. I'm weird. Well, it's Dahmer's Cool Stuff, and as always, do good gaming, and talk to you all later. God, if this is like 20 minutes, I'm gonna fucking freak.